Greetings and welcome back, Dapplings, to the Hebenu, currently our temple ship. I have brought you back. I've been working hard on uh, shaping the vessel so far, or at least rather kind of defining the rooms, giving it a little bit more of a shape and a purpose than it previously had. Those who joined me in the stream on Saturday will already have seen much of the ship, but for those who haven't, I'll very give you a very brief tour. I have taken on board some of the suggestions that have been left in the comments and certainly the names as well. We have a teleporter room here with a Stargate-like teleporter there. We have the chancel in here, which is our, or rather, the sort of area around an altar in a cathedral. So this is the chancel and it has our AIs in it and they have names. They have to have signs in front of them because unfortunately, Whenever you save and load or a game or anything like that with an AI that's been named, it loses the name. Very frustrating. We have Whiskey Whiskers, who is responsible for a large number of the room names on this vessel. We have Doctor, sorry, Honorable Doctor Edwin Moriarty, or just Moriarty, because I don't think there's enough room. We have Zana. We have Mega Scoutlet, Frost Steel, More Gold, L MacGyver and Raur Foxington. What a fantastic name. And additionally, anyone who was at the stream on Saturday, I mean, you already know who this is going to be, who it had to be. It is funny, man. Thank you very much, everyone who has generously put your name forward for control of an AI. By the way, if you have a favorite color, do let me know, and I will do my best to paint your AIs that colour. In fact, if you've got a favourite icon, perhaps your avatar on YouTube or anything like that, then uh, if you can send it to me using my business email address, which you can find on the About page of my YouTube channel, then I will try to pop up a couple of posters around the ship honouring our leader AI. Now, the engine room is the Undercroft. And after I'm done with this quick uh, tour of the ship, I will be getting to work on a missile defense system and later on our landing pads for aircraft. We've got the aft reliquary. Now, I, as per the comments, I have stripped this down a little bit so that it's not quite as dangerous to the AI. There's still a threat posed by this room exploding, but it's not nearly the absolute going to blow the AI up threat that it was before. It'll take out the floor in certain sections, and that in turn might take out some of the AIs, but likewise, it might leave some of them. Now, down at the very far end of this enormous hall, I really do like the shaping I've done here. The kind of... it is... it does feel like a hall. I wish they were like tables or some sort of centipedes. Perhaps I'll have some sort of pillar, maybe have some posters on it. I don't know. But uh, we have another corridor. Now, I, I'm really liking the walkways. I like the fact that I've got a ship big enough to have corridors between rooms. I prefer it if rooms are not connected to rooms, but rooms connected to walkways. Um, and corridors and the lights. Now that's going to be a stairs down to the lowest level of the ship. And in here we have the four reliquary. Now this reliquary is just absolutely jam-packed full of ammo. So, you know, that's going to blow up big when it blows up. I'm, I would say if, if only I weren't so certain of it blowing up. Uh, ooh, can't quite get up there. Right now it sits very deep in the water because... Yeah, the, the back is much heavier than the front right now. This is the bridge, the top layer of the bridge. This will be the layer of the deck. Now, some things are going to be elevated, but more or less, this is the deck. This is the first layer of the bridge. And as per real bridges, though I'm not really going for a, a real-world aesthetic, I will have the uh, actual bridge, the part where I'm going to be sat in with all of the chairs and controls and things like that, up on this level, and I'm going to try to have a slanted window. Now, this is an idea that was uh, given to me based off this idea, um, Kuromai, I think it was, Kuromai, um, who saw this system. This may look like a wall, but it is, in fact, a spin block. It is a false wall, and they had an idea to have a window on a spin block to get a sort of slanted bridge effect, and what a stroke of genius that was. Credit where it's due, that was glorious. Now, down here, this is our anti-missile system, and this is the first thing that I want to work on in this episode. Now, just to cover what it does, the control blocks here, this will close this wall when there's no enemies, or at least the enemies are so far away it isn't a, it isn't a, a threat. This is a hostile missile detector. When a mis hostile missile is in, within 2,000 meters, it will open this. But to simulate this, let me see, where are you? Let's go to every input seconds, just open up. There we go. So this wall tilts back, and what do we have in here? We have 
anti-missile missiles, and flares. Now, we're going to have several of these kind of deployable um, anti-missile structures along this vessel. This is not going to be the only one. There's going to be at least one on the other side, and then similar kinds of designs all over the ship. So there's going to be a lot of anti-missile missile capability in this, because I don't really want to go with anti-missile lasers. I think I want to try the anti-missile missile, missile uh, solution. Now, we have four flares and eight anti-missiles. The way the flares are set up, these are just four sticky flares, and the reason I have to have four is because the ship itself, even without anything running, is already 5,000 degrees. I'm, if I only had one missile block and two sticky flares, then they only get to about 7,000 degrees after a fair bit of burn time. I want them to hit the, uh, a, a much higher temperature much sooner. With four, they get to about thirteen to 14,000 degrees at peak, and that's after a few seconds, but they get past 5,000 very quickly. I have named these the Sun Fury because, well, you know, they're actually hotter than the sun when they get really hot. Now, the anti-missile missiles are called the Brutus because they're missiles that kill missiles. Turncoats. We've got fins, or we did have fins. Let me put those back. We've got a variable speed thruster with a five second ramp time. Now, this is important because I don't want it to be going at its maximum speed straight away. And in fact, I might even increase. No, I'm going to leave it at five. We'll see how it goes. I haven't tested this yet because it is, doesn't work yet, but we'll see in a moment. But that should be good enough. Then we've got about 7,000 maximum thrust, one fuel tank. So these aren't going to get anywhere far. So you don't want to really start throwing them out too early. But they will get there fast. And a missile interceptor as well. Now. That is the case on all of these. The problem that I've run into with this, and the main reason why I brought you back at this point to go over how I'm going to try and solve it, is because I think the solution is rather elegant. If it works, I haven't tested it, but if it does, then it may help anyone with the same problem. Now, the problem is automated control blocks cannot control weapon systems on a spin block. This is a spin block, not a turret. So an automated control block, which is the usual way I would try to launch an anti-missile system, that is, if a hostile missile is within like a thousand meters, launch, fire the weapon system right next to you. Can't do it. On maximum infinite range, it still can't fire them. It seems that if the ACB is on the hull, it cannot fire a weapon system on the spin block, and you can't put an ACB on a spin block. So that does create a bit of a problem. So... What I'm thinking now, who's going to be who's going to be our our victim here? I mean, our our volunteer. Uh, more gold. It's going to be you. More golds. You are going to be given a very special job. I need two automated control blocks for you. I may need more, but I'm thinking I'm only going to need two. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I may need to change that. We're going to give you a wireless transmitter. Now, understand. There's more golds. This is one of only four that are going to exist on this ship, or rather one of only four channels available on this ship. You are being given a very great responsibility. Also, I don't know if I pointed this out before, brains! Brains inside the AIs! You're fake AIs! You're not actually strong AIs! Someone nicked someone's brain and stuck it in a... Well, it's not even a jar. They stuck it in a box of metal. Those scallywags. If I find out who this brain thief is, I'm going to have strong words with him with my head in a suitably protective helmet, of course. Now, we are going to set up the ACB here. If... Actually, one of them... Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this AI controlling the missiles. Now, the problem is, if there's any enemy even remotely close, then it's just going to be firing the missiles. Now, I don't want it to just do that over and over again. So, first and foremost, every... Let's say, every two seconds... Because we want it to do this frequently. As soon as there are no missiles in the sky, I want it to stop trying to shoot. We want you, AI mainframe, with only a two range, because you're right next to it, turn off. You want to go to sleep when there's nothing to shoot. You, however, we want you, every input seconds, no, no, no. When there is a missile closer than 1,250 meters, that should give it enough. Well, actually, you know what, we can... We can say it even further away. 1,500 meters. If there is a missile within 1,500 meters... Uh, but wait. I don't think the thrusters on our anti-missile missiles will ever get out to that. So yeah, we'll go with 1,250. Oh, we would have. So 1,250 meters. Then I want this to turn the AI mainframe on. It doesn't need to be combat. Because combat is more for... If you've got a, a boat 
that's that's sailing around. Uh, then combat would cause it to try to use broadsides and approach the enemy. We just want it to turn on. When it's on, it'll actually use its weapon systems. Now, there we go. Is that you? Yes. Okay, fantastic. That is working. Now, we go over to the weapon system. Little duck up here. There we are. And... Ah, uh, disorientated. There we go. Now, we want a AI, a local weapon controller, controlling this. So we want it to rotate that way. There we go. We want it to have no restrictions. It can fire at any time, for, at any distance. We want this turned back around, and we want... Uh, failsafe, I guess? Sure. Let's put a failsafe down there. I don't think a failsafe actually helps. Not connected. Slot into the side of a local web eye controller. What do you mean it's not connected? Of course it's connected. I've just snagged it on the AI controller, you scallywag. Maybe it's because it isn't hooked up to a mainframe yet. Wireless tra receiver. Now, I want this one to be broadcasting. Oh, where are you? I've lost my... There we are. I want this one on channel 4 as well. Okay, now it's connected to mainframe, connected to mainframe, not connected apparently, why is that? Why are you lying to me? You know what, I don't actually even think you, you would work. Okay, right, I'm going to do something that I rarely do. I'm going to test this, and I may be dumb. It may be very dumb, so I'm going to save the ship first. There we go, let's get all of that set up. Now, please be saved, Hey Benu. There we go. Alright, more goals. You turned off? Yes, you're turned off. Okay. Now, we want to go out to a feral distance, about, let's say, 800, 900 meters. 600. And then we're going to load in... There we are, 900 meters. We're going to load in a Sobek. Now, the Sobek is a missile-only vehicle. It's not going to be on our team. It's going to be the White Flares. No, it's not. It's going to be the Onyx Watch, because that is what the ship is designed to destroy. Now, just to clarify... Oh, I better not be controlling the missile system. Now, just to cl clarify some points, this is probably going to be the only ship of its type that I will ever make. Or spawn. Okay, it's launched. Is this going to activate? Oh, no, I've forgotten something really important. We have no missile warners. Please don't do too much damage. Ouch. Ouch, I'm so sorry. But uh, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Right, we are going to need missile warners for our missile systems to even do anything. <laughs> I am such a derp. But, as I was saying, this will probably be the only ship I will ever make of this type. It's not going to be one of many, and I'm going to name it after, after whoever suggests the class name. It is going to be the only one. And the reason for that is this is going to be kind of a capital ship for attacking a specific faction. I was playing around with this idea for a little while, and then it kind of hit me that... And then this really solidified this fate. It's kind of like the Reapers. Each Reaper was, was made of the genetic material of a race, the, the kind of alpha race of that cycle. The, I'm going to make e a capital ship pretty much for each faction that we fight. It will be the only one of its kind. Eventually I'll have a fleet. Of like eight ships like this, or rather seven, because I mean, seven and an avatar. I guess the avatar is a special case, we've got many of those, and it was before I decided to start doing this. And really, the Deepwater Guard are a tutorial fleet, so perhaps they just don't need one. But this is going to be the only one of its type. Now, let me just make sure that you're working on, on, on. Now, that one is probably um, more gold. Okay, we're ready. Sorry about the derp there, I do apologize. All right. Out we go. Okay, it's launched. It's opened up. We're launching flares. We're launching anti-missile missiles. Oh my lord, it works! Oh my goodness, it works! Happy days! Oh, this is fantastic. More! More missiles! Fire more! And it doesn't fire them unless there's a missile in the air. Oh dear, you've missed. I don't accept failure very well. Oh, you scallywags. Okay, well, one, I guess I'll forgive you. Come on, we, we need better than this. That's right. You're fast enough, you should be able to catch up. Oh no, bad times. Ah! Okay, well, I guess I'm going to give you a pass because 
This is one very small part of what's meant to be a much larger system. And you are doing pretty well, to be fair. You're letting one through every now and then. I, I forgive you this once. But there we are. Okay. So that's gone. It works. I'm very, very happy. I'm sorry about this nerd poll. I, I mean, I didn't even give you a name. You know what? Robert Pelson. Because, well, you all know what's coming next. Your name was Robert Pelson. Okay. Well, I will duplicate this system on the other side in a little bit. It's just basically a spin block, and I'll basically be using a prefab. So that's not too much of a concern. However, at this point, I want to work on the landing areas. And welcome back. Look at this beautiful window. Oh, no, I fell through the floor in that bridge. Damn it. There's not going to be stairs coming up here. I figured that, well, why am I adding stairs? I'm a robot with rocket legs. I mean, the stairs look really nice, but they're, honestly, they're derpy. They're not functional. I can't go upstairs. Even when I can kind of jump, sometimes I get stuck. So into the bridge will just be a hole. Um, and I'll just have to leap up there with my rocket feet. But look at it. On spawn, an ACB down there will tell this spin block to rotate minus 25 degrees. And that gives us this beautiful angled window here it is absolutely fantastic i mean it has necessitated building in in a less than ideal way oh what no am i stuck no Whew. but uh, there's an ugly gap there but i i'm fairly certain i can live with that I, i'll probably have to have something similar at the top because ultimately when this spawns in this is perfectly vertical so it needs to be able to have room around itself then to to turn I've also duplicated the anti-missile system over on this side. But the other thing I've been working on whilst you've been away are the landing pads. First, I kind of stenciled out the sort of um, dimensions that I'd be interested in having, which are 28 wide and 24 long. Though the length is a little bit more flexible. Width, very, very strict. We've got to be very strict on width because it has to fit on this landing pad lengthwise it can any vehicle can kind of uh tip uh, or rather just peek over the lip of the landing pad if it wants to we'll probably have the uh anchor the tractor beam somewhere around here anchoring it but we've got stairs going up here as well and i will almost certainly be painting designs onto these floors uh, so I'll be replacing these four meter beams, which I've got here currently with single blocks of metal so that I can color them individually. We do have a little bit of room underneath, and this is where we're going to be storing things like uh, perhaps a little bit of ablative armor, some repair bots, some electrical generators, because perhaps the flyers will actually be um, capable of charging batteries rather than having fuel engines i mean maybe they'll have both i've seen quite a lot of flyers have both with the electrical engine as, as kind of a uh tide over a secondary system just to keep it in the sky if its main engine gets blown up now as i believe i alluded to earlier though i i may have done that in a section of the video that i'm going to be cutting out because i did a, a fair bit of, of building which i wasn't too interested with but the idea here is to have four unique vehicles submitted by yourselves so this would be a bit of a community effort now they don't have to adhere to any particular aesthetic style i would like it that they look good but you know that's just me they don't have to have any particular engine type again i will have electrical chargers underneath all I would ask is that they adhere to the dimensions of 24 by 28, with 28 being the width, and they really need to adhere to that, ideally be a little bit smaller. The length, that's a bit more fluid. You can be a little bit bigger than 24, maybe up to 30 even, but generally speaking, aiming for the 24 by 28 mark would be ideal. I would ask that if it needs any kind of AI to work, such as returning if it's out of ammo perhaps you built it with a design to constantly come back to the mothership to rearm and resupply before heading back out that any acbs that control that behavior be on the vehicle itself rather than relying on me being able to set up something unique just to run the vehicle but we can always look at that and as i mentioned this is going to be a capital ship there's only going to be one of these ships 
it is going to be built for fighting the Onyx Wash, and then that's it. It will be a unique vessel, and thus its vehicles, its sub-vehicles, will also be unique vessels. As a result, these will these will be the only copies of, of these aircraft that will be in this game. It can be built very specifically for this ship. So with that in mind, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my plans. We're going to have three main deck guns. These are going to be very powerful, high gauge, slow firing, destructive shells. There's one going to be over here. It's going to be probably elevated quite a lot. And then another one at the front as well that is just slightly below that main cannon. The, the taller one is going to be the much stronger of the two. Then we'll have a slightly weaker but not a small gun. It's still going to be a big gun at the front. And that same design will then be present at the back. We are also going to be having cruise missiles on this, probably at the back. And that is why I've left the uh, bottom here very conspicuously cut off. Is because I'm not sure where I'm placing these cruise missiles. So, and because they're going to be such tall constructions, I didn't want to build a room into an area where they are going to have to exist. Along the sides, we're going to be having AA guns. We will also be having torpedoes. I'm favoring the idea of having a kind of the riot gun style uh, missile launcher that I used for my fortress to fire torpedoes. And this is why I've got these doors leading out to the side. There's going to be corridors going along here so you can get behind the weapon systems, perhaps some maintenance, that kind of thing going on. Also, we are going to be having quite a lot of NPCs spawning on this vessel so they can run around and try and take over things if need be or repair things. But... In terms of how I'm going to pick from the submissions, it's going to completely come down to aesthetics. I'm just going to look at them. I'm going to try and decide, ah, I really like the look of that. That looks like it would work well with this fleet. I mean, I guess the functionality is also going to come into a little bit in that will it work well with this fleet. But a lot of it is going to come down to, to how it looks and just generally the overall feel and how well I think it's going to mesh with the ship it's going to be launched from and the other four fighters that I'm going to have on, or rather the other three aircraft that we're going to have here um, it's not going to be random it is going to be me picking this but understand that if I don't pick your submission it isn't because your submission is bad it's just because your submission didn't mesh as well in this particular instance so uh, don't take it as as any kind of snub at your building skill I am sure it will be vast far far greater than my own at the very least but I think on that note, we're going to wrap up this particular episode. I'm really happy with this. It is always takes a really long time to build any kind of experimental system, and this was very much an experimental system. And I had to spend a long time just getting everything set up, and as such, we haven't really got as much progress made. But I think the way we're going to wrap this up is by testing this system out with two of them. So let's go ahead. We'll add in another Robert Paulson. There we go. I mean, uh, uh, no named AI. Because it hasn't died yet. And we'll add in the missile warners. And we'll just see how having two of these affects it. So there's our missile warner. Come out of build mode. My lord, this thing is heavy at the back. Oh, wait, I'm controlling myself. Or my camera. Right, let's uh, head out to about, uh, let's say, 850. I think that's where the Sobek starts to attack from. So, are we around 8.15? No, a little bit too close. Around here we'll do. We'll come out just a little bit. That should be... Yeah, no, nah, that's a little bit too much. That'll do. Right, load in a Sobek. I am, of course, sorry that you have to play the bad guy. And once again, you're going to be the Onyx Watch because that is what we're fighting against. There we go. Now... As that gets within 850 meters, it should engage. Basically, the moment its lasers actually lock on to us is when it's going to start firing. Has it gotten closer? Oh, there we go. And away our missile system. Oh, this is fantastic. Come on, shoot it down. No. No one is getting through. No. Ah. Scallywags. I disapprove. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, they're designed for attacking missiles that are much further away. Perhaps if we turned down the ramp on the missiles. Let me quickly change that. Brutus, where are you? I want this ramp to be a little bit higher, so it takes longer to get to its maximum speed. You know what? Let's go for 10. 
double the ramp time. Okay, and there we are. Now save over the current booters. There we go. Save. Right, now I want to load all of these as booters. There we go. Right, now these ones should be traveling much slower and able to change their direction much faster as a result. Yeah, they're, being, they're much more capable of curving down and getting to those close missiles. I'm really liking this system. And it's going to have a lot more of these anti-missile missiles launching from it. They're not really getting here. The only thing we're, we're being hit by is occasional bits of shrapnel at this point. I am so pleased with this system. And against um, actual heat-seeking missiles, this would be even more capable. Right now, these ones are ignoring these flares entirely, but these flares should be attracting uh, any incoming missiles. If we were against the Deepwater Guard, which tends to use infrared missiles, we would be fine. I am really, really happy with this design, and it is one I'm going to continue everywhere else. I'm also extremely happy simply because it's fancy. I'll be honest with you, the fanciness alone makes me happy. I also like the fact that these things don't launch unless there is an enemy missile in the sky. Initially, I was thinking of just having the AI trigger on there being an enemy. So once there are enemies, it would just be spamming flares constantly. But currently, it only does it if there's actually a missile being launched. Well, I think that's all we have to do. So uh, thank you very much, Sobek. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. Oh, no one's going to get through. Ah. Uh. Well, there you go. At least you can be proud, Sobek. You managed to get a few missiles through, all told. And actually, right on top of an ammo stockpile as well. Ah, that would have been bad. But I am very, very happy with these systems. Ooh, that one's already closed. That was very fast. I guess it could have just been the timing. Maybe this one just missed the timer to close. Let me just double check, though. You said... Uh, rotate zero degrees. What's your timer on it? 60 seconds. So in a minute that should close. And around here it should be the same thing, more or less. Oh. That would have been bad. That could have led to some badness there. Namely, if there are no enemies, but there is still missiles. For example, if we manage to kill an enemy just after it launches an enormous volley of missiles... That, the reason why I've got the delay of a minute is so that this door doesn't immediately close whilst the AI is still trying to shoot down enemy missiles. Because that could lead to badness. I mean, thankfully, there are no actual destructive warheads on those missiles, at least in terms of blowing open a metal hull. But I still wouldn't want us to be just sticking sticky flares inside the ship. That would just be silly. But on that note, I think I am happy to wrap this one up and continue work on the rest of the ship the i'll finish up the work on the launch pads and then copy them over i'm going to wait to paint the designs until i know what i'm putting on it now to submit your designs all you need to do is go to my email address which is on the about page of my youtube channel and send me an email letting me know like for example if you put it up on the scene workshop just give me a link to your workshop submission or if you want you can just drop it in the comments and i will check it out but that is going to be it from me i do hope you are enjoying this build and i hope that uh, my discovery of how to make weapons on spin blocks work will help a few of you with your own designs but uh, until next time and as always do take care